the kites are out in force today. After yesterday's stormy weather, I don't suppose they got out to eat much. They're making up for it today. And for his on-screen debut, meet Mr. Frog. Sorry, mate, didn't mean to startle you. All of my no-dig potatoes are now in. The, uh, the first earlies are in tubs in the greenhouse. That's my second earlies. You can see where I've, you can see where the little piles of compost are. That's where I've parted the straw plonked a potato on the ground and then covered it all up with a bit of compost. Over here are the, they're Charlottes by the way, second earlies. These are the main crops, the Sarpomira, exactly the same method. And as they grow, instead of doing the traditional earthing them up with soil, I'm going to earth them up with wood shavings, compost, straw, I'm just in the process of retrieving myself a load of um, spent compost and horse manure from my carrot beds. I've got one, two, three, four old bathtubs that I inherited when I moved here. They were already here, the last person left them behind. And uh, this ground is so flinty and lumpy and clayey and horrible it's not really very good for growing nice straight carrots. So ever since day one, I've been growing carrots in these old bathtubs that they left behind. Now the soil in them, it's a mixture of all, oh, and it's been in there about four years now. I, re I kind of replenish it every year, I refeed it. Not, not replenish it as in completely change it all out, but I'll, uh, I'll top it up and feed it and get some nutrients in there. And it's all, uh, it's well rotted horse manure and it's compost, homemade and commercial. It's been in there a while, so I thought maybe what with my additional need for mulch this year, this is probably a good year to empty them all out and almost start from scratch. So what I've done, you can see there's a load of, uh, oh, what is this stuff? It's, um, I can't remember its name. I will put it on the screen. It's a bit of a pain, it self seeds very readily and it's completely filled these up over the winter. So what I've done, I've skimmed them all off the surface. There we go, that's all waiting to be disposed of. I've dug out the vast majority of the compost, dumped it on here for now. Now you can see there are lots of little white roots in there, but they're not gonna be a problem. Um, I've got all the crowns out, the little crown where the root sort of uh, bursts through and starts producing leaves. That's where this particular weed will regrow from. Those little white thready roots aren't gonna be a problem. So I've got a vast amount there. When you put together what's in all of these, I've got quite a large amount of, of mulch. I left a little bit in the bottom. I've mixed in my usual go-to recipe a load of blood, blood fish and bone and some chicken manure pellets. So the next thing I need to do is mix all that in, water it down, and then over there in the distance, I've got a large amount of compost to start filling them all up with. I remembered it's willow herb. Um, it's not, the two I know are rose bay willow herb and marsh willow herb. I don't think it's either of those two, but it is a willow herb. As you can see, it's not actually that much of a toil to get it out. I dig chunks from the surface, then just grab it by the crowns, give it a shake. And as long as you're getting that bit out, all of that that you left behind, that's all fine. They'll all just die off and disappear. Ooh. Found a bit of rotten carrot there. I'll leave that out for Tony.
Okay, good, good. We've got two nice newly replenished carrot beds there, ready to go, all topped up with compost. Got a nice big pile of spent material there, which is gonna come in very handy as a mulch. And I've not even done those two yet. So I've got double that to come. Anyway, rule number one, don't cripple yourself. That's quite enough heavy digging for me for one day. So my next job, I've got some tomatoes ready to go in just there. Welcome to the tomato shelter. Bit of clearing to do, bit of prep, <laughs> as you can see. But uh, that's where I grow my tomatoes. It's got a roof keeping the rain off but letting the sun through and it's sheltered on the south and the west side open on the northeast so it, uh, it keeps the prevailing southwesterly weather and the rain off of them so blight's not a problem wind damage isn't a problem and it's, it's a nice airy little greenhouse being not enclosed completely it allows for a bit of airflow and i'll get good results from there here we've got one two three four five tomatoes ready to go out and one just wants to sit in the greenhouse for a little bit longer i've got all sorts here ready to go out look i've basically just moved it i don't want to get i don't want to jump too far ahead uh we're past the risk of frost i believe i hope you know it's got to that point of the year where i'm prepared to prepared to take the risk i think we'll be all right so these lot they've all been down at home they're going to be in the greenhouse now i think they'll cope but firstly today we can put these tomatoes out these have been out in the open in the garden they don't need hardening off they're well used to the wind and everything else let's see what order we can make out of that mess actually uh, just before i deal with that i need to deal with this little blighter i've got one in a snap trap um, i'd say by the size of it this is one of this year's first broods. I've not seen any adult rats. And what I'm normally catching at this time of year is the little youngsters out on their first forays. They're a bit uh, bit wet beyond the ears, you know. They'll walk straight into a trap, no problem. This one's a little bit bigger, so I've got a feeling it's probably one of the very first of this year. Um, you'll notice I've got different gloves on. I have specific gloves for this. Now, let's... Give a little offering out for the kites. They might well have young to feed at the moment. And what I'll do, I'll lay it out in the open, somewhere obvious, belly up. Lay them out belly up. And the kites will spot that a mile off. And being belly up, they know it's well and truly dead. We'll come back when I leave and see if it's gone yet. It might not, because I'm working just uh, just a few metres away. That wasn't so bad. Um, being a bed that I made myself, and it's a good two, maybe even two and a half foot deep with compost and manure and all that nice stuff, everything just scraped off the surface, to be honest. And even the nettles, because there's no compaction going on here. The nettle roots are just pulling out a hole so there's no digging here. That's not going to take long to do. And there's just the one there to dig out. Can't remember what the hell that is. But I know it's got a big old root on it. That'll do. I'm pretty much going to leave it there for today. The tomatoes aren't in the ground, but uh, what I found, well this is my excuse, what I actually found, what with this being under a shelter, under a rain roof, the soil on the surface was very dry, I was expecting that, but actually even a bit further down, it was absolutely bone dry under there, so having just mixed in a load of bloodfish and bone and, and chicken manure pellets and compost, I've given it a really, really heavy soaking, and I'm going to let that sit and homogenise for a week. I like to do that. 
especially when you're using chicken manure pellets they can be a little bit harsh on young roots they're very concentrated so that's had a really good soak in it's just going to sit and level itself out for a week and hopefully next weekend I'll get those in the ground um, it's a good idea anyway just to let them sit there and climatize although I'm not expecting a frost this week should it happen I can just whip them into the greenhouse this lot here um, I'm going to sit them in the greenhouse they've all had a good soak a good water uh, the two courgettes there really could do with potting on but that's all right that won't take me 15 minutes I'll do that one morning in the week before I go to work I've got my cucumbers sweet peppers courgettes that's a load of swede and cauliflower sweet corn sweet corn I think we're good now but that can all go and sit in the greenhouse I think uh, Chris and Helen's nectarine tree there I think now that probably the, pro the frost risk has gone I'm going to sit that out in the tomato shelter as well before I go just to let it start to uh, let it start to acclimatize to outdoor life uh, I think next job is going to be to start clearing in here that's my first early potatoes in them tubs nothing coming through yet which I'm surprised at you would have thought they would but uh, we're pretty much ready that they can go and sit outside they don't need to be here anymore and I can start clearing these beds ready for me uh, me melons and me cucumbers all safely in all watered let's get out into that wind And in case anybody was wondering, the kites haven't been yet.